So now I'm going to talk about the problem of partial observability. What do we do in the real world when we don't see everything that we care about? Now in that last chart I showed a vector r coming out of the model network. So in the traditional mathematics the task of understanding reality beyond what we see in the vector x is part of cognitive predictions. It's part of the modeling task and it's the job of the model to get the right information to the critic. So where does the right information come from? In the brain I would argue the cerebral cortex comes up with a vector r, a representation of the present state of reality beyond just what we see, the total state of reality. Some people call it a world model. And how does the brain do it? How can we do it in engineering? In the general nonlinear case, the best state-of-the-art method today is to use something I call a time lag recurrent network. Now there are ways to do better, there are ways to train these things beyond the scope of this course, but this is a very effective method and I haven't seen anybody use anything more effective today. A time lag recurrent network, we have a universal nonlinear function approximator, which may be a neural network, and it inputs x and it outputs a prediction, just like the simple model network I showed you before, except that in addition, it outputs a bunch of numbers, a vector r. And what it does with these vectors, all it does is it remembers them with a time delay and uses them as an input to its next prediction. So it has a kind of memory. This is called a recurrent loop with a lag, time lag recurrent network. And the lag is what lets it go from one time period to the next because we're trying to predict from one time period to the next. This is very different from other kinds of recurrent networks which have other purposes and other properties. Here we have a clock like the cerebral cortex. We have a clock that enforces a relation between one time period and the next. Now it turns out there is something very similar in linear quadratic Gaussian control. Because in real world linear quadratic control used for things like cruise missiles and aerospace, things you can read about in Stengel's textbook or Bryson and Ho's textbook, you never see everything you're interested in. So they have a block which is called a common filtering block, which is a lot like the model block I have here, and the common filter outputs an estimate of the current state of the world. They feed that estimate into their matrix Riccati equations, and there are theorems that prove that it works. That's called the certainty equivalence principle. In the linear Gaussian case, if you have an unbiased estimate of the current state of the world and just feed it into your controller as if it was the true state, you'll still get the optimal action under uncertainty. Now, that caused a lot of people to think, well, R is just the generalization to the nonlinear case, but it's not so simple. Because in the nonlinear case, the old certain equivalent theorem does not hold. In the nonlinear case, if you make your decisions based on your best guess, in the general case you will make inferior decisions. In some applications you won't be far off, but I've certainly seen decision problems where you will be in terrible shape if you make your decisions assuming that you know that the most likely case is true. I remember a case where I was chasing after a couple of missing children in Mexico and I was at a certain coordinate and they might have been half a mile north, they might have been half a mile south. The average best guess is they were right where I was and if I chased after them based on assuming they were where I was I would be in bad shape. To make an optimal decision as in decision theory you need to account for the fact that there's uncertainty. There's a probability they might be here, a probability they might be there. 
So in the nonlinear case, the optimal decisions depend on your belief state, the probability of different outcomes. The fascinating story is that with a time lag recurrent network, what you get out, if you converge well, now, if you learn enough, if you have enough weights, if you reduce error down to the minimum, the more you converge, the better this R is as a condensed representation of your belief state. In other words, R from a time lag recurrent network has the information you need in order to make the right decisions. So the best state of the art right now for partially observed problems and adaptive critics is to use this kind of model to reconstruct the state of the world and feed that into the critic. Now, one of the things about these time lag recurrent networks is they are very versatile. Some people use them directly for model predictive control, which doesn't account for the stochastic case, but there are people in the auto industry who use it, Ford has used it, uh, I would encourage you to read a lot of the papers by Feldkamp and Prokhorov. On my website, I have posted, with their permission, a paper by Prokhorov which shows how this kind of network converges much better than standard methods like, ex like older methods like extended common filtering. It's about as good as another method called particle filtering, but much, much faster and cheaper. This is the best state-of-the-art today to solve the problem of partial observability with critics. So next week I will be talking more about neural networks because I've said put neural networks in these boxes, I need to tell you how and what they are and I'll tell you something about the history of them and the limitations of HDP. Thank you.